Hey there YouTube, it's Bobby, aka Paginator, and I'm here with a wrap-up for my reading during the month of June. I read so much in June, like, I can't believe how much I read. I got through my official TBR, which was seven books, in, like, ten days. Like, it was crazy. I have never read that fast through my official TBR, like, ever. Alright, so I should really just stop talking about how much I read because it's going to be a long video. So, we'll start with my official TBR books, and the first one was Bedazzled by Ryan LaSala. This was really fun. It was a competition between two ex-boyfriends. Um, they actually get forced to work together in the final round of a cosplay co competition, and it's kind of high stakes for both of them for different reasons. They originally met in the, um, what's the word, like the little uh, sequins, the sequin aisle of a craft store, and they dated for a while, then broke up, and then got forced to work together in this competition, and it was uh, just a fun, like, lighthearted, cute little romance that was great to kick off Pride Month with, so good job, Ryan LaSala. Up next, we have A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. Another very fun book. This one is about three sisters, each of whom inherit a magical object, and each object does something different. For example, there is a carpet bag that can transport you to different locations. And these three sisters, they don't realize it at the beginning, but they have been cursed that if they ever leave their island area, that they will die. Um, they are going to try to break the curse and also they're um, doing some adventurous and perhaps dangerous things like breaking people out of jail in order to accomplish their mission and it's a very fun book. There is a series. I must say I like the British covers better so if I do continue with the series I might look, in, look into getting the UK covers through Book Depository because yeah just because they're prettier <laughs> but a good read. Another middle grade from my TBR is The Great Brain Robbery. This is the sequel to The Train to Impossible Places. The third book is Out. I don't have it yet. Um, this is a fun series. The first book is about a girl named Susie who um, one day a train comes to her living room. I know, crazy, right? Um, and she ends up hopping this train and being enlisted as a member of the Postal Service and they take mail to Impossible Places. In the sequel, they have to go on quite an adventure in order to save Trollville, which is one of the locations or impossible places that the train travels to. And Susie is rejoined with some of her magical friends and creatures. And we also meet um, some interesting villains and maybe a returning one in this fun adventure. Next, I had a nonfiction book, which is The Art of Subtext by Charles Baxter. It was super short. You can see it's a little tiny. And it is a writing book. It had a couple of good practical suggestions for the most part, though it was theory and, I don't know, it wasn't everything I hoped it would be, but I might flip back through it again and just look at some of his tips in the future. I don't know. The next book was The Left-Handed Booksellers of London. This I picked for the prompt that was a five-star prediction. Oh boy, was I wrong. I did not give this five stars, and I think I don't want to even keep it anymore. Like, I didn't enjoy it, and I know some people out there loved this book so much, so I apologize. We can have differing opinions and still be friends. It's okay. Um, but this is about... Um, left-handed booksellers who also have a special job they are fighting against forces of darkness or whatever um the right-handed booksellers are intellectual more intellectual but there are um magical beings that or the booksellers i guess i should say are the magical beings who kind of police the old world like in terms of mythical characters and stuff um, Susan, our main character, is brought into this world, um, while she's looking for her father that she's never met, and crazy things happen. Um, it wasn't my cup of tea. I, I couldn't tell you exactly why, though. I don't know if it was the pacing, or I just wasn't identifying with the characters, I'm not sure. It just wasn't for me, but, I mean, someone out there will probably love it, and there you go. 
I should have put this in my giveaway video too. Earlier this week, or maybe last week, I posted a like a book giveaway. Maybe I should have given away this copy because I bet someone would really love to read it and it's in very good condition. So if you're watching and you would like this book, shoot me an email. My email address is in the description box below and I'll see if I can um, send it off to you. Up next on my TBR was Blaze Wrath Games. This was fantastic. It was adventurous. It had great characters, dragons in it. It was awesome. It was kind of dystopian a little bit. Um, the, it was a sporting competition that was like a team thing. It kind of felt very Olympics-ish because you had to make your country's team. And our main character is competing for Puerto Rico, even though she lives in the mainland United States, um, in Florida. She is chosen for the Puerto Rico team as the runner. And the runner is someone who doesn't have a dragon, but has a very specific job in the Blaze Wrath games. And it's kind of up to the runner to complete the task that wins them. Kind of like in Harry Potter, if you didn't have someone catch the snitch, the game would never end. If the runner didn't complete their task, the game wouldn't end. The dragons and people would just keep fighting each other. So the runner is really important. Um, oh, sorry, this is flapping off here. Um, Lana Torres is the main character. She was born in Puerto Rico, but she moved to Florida with her mother. And she um, has dreamed of competing in the Blaze Wrath games and does make the Puerto Rico team. And then she kind of learns that things aren't exactly as she thought they were. And that's about all I want to tell you because I don't want to spoil anything. But it's very, very, very good. Lots of action and really fun characters. So highly recommend Blaze Wrath games. And the author is Amparo Ortiz. And the last book on my official TBR is We Free the Stars by Hafsa Faisal. This um, is the sequel to We Hunt the Flame. In the first book, our main character goes into a dark forest, like a kind of cursed forest, to help tame the forest by retrieving magical objects and things happened that she meets this guy who is the prince who's also murdered a bunch of people and he's on his own kind of quest and there are other people slash creatures they encounter while in the shar which is the forest and um or the ours is the forest sorry the shar is something else i'm getting my words mixed up but anyway um zafir is the girl um nasir is the prince that's the um, guy that's murdered a lot of people and they are battling someone evil um, in this sequel what can I tell you not much the adventures continue for quite a long ways because you can see it's a chunky one um, very action-packed as well lots of political intrigue in addition to travel, adventure, questing, etc., Middle Eastern culture um, as well. And it was just really, really well done. I, again, would recommend this series. The first one, again, is We Hunt the Flame, and the author is Hafsa Faisal. Now, moving away from my official TBR, we're next going to take a look at some comic graphic novels. Um, that I read in the month of June, and then we'll move on to the novel novels that were not on my TBR. So I have this pair of graphic novels, Dragon Kingdom of Renly 1 and 2. One is The Cold Fire Curse, and two is Shadow Hills. This is a series about dragons, and the Scarlet Dragon here lives in the castle, and he's a little bit spoiled. Um, then we have this gold dragon here who lives in the dragon kingdom with the other dragons. We have a couple of possibly suspicious other dragons that they meet and encounter along their way. In the first one, there is a curse placed upon the dragon kingdom and it's going to freeze everything over unless they can save the day. And then in the second one, another evil is threatening the dragon kingdom and there's a naughty little dragon with an eye patch back here hiding in the trees. We also have some enchanted objects in this one, and it's just a fun quest. Um, I believe there's going to be more in the series, and we'll see 
if I choose to pick them up. They were fun. If I can get some of my reluctant readers in my classroom to read them, I will definitely pick up more in the series for them to read. Next up, we have Catwoman Soul Stealer. This is the graphic novel version. I read the novel um, that Sarah J. Mass wrote and really, really loved it. It's um, Catwoman's backstory, Selena Kyle, how she became Catwoman. And she kind of joined forces with Poison Ivy and... Oh, what's the girl with the ponytails? I'm blanking on her name. Joker's girlfriend. I think Margot Robbie plays her in a movie. What is her name? You know who I'm talking about. Anyway, we have a girl trio of villains in this one. And Batwing is also a character in this one as well. The, I, the graphic novel was fun to look at and like see the art style and things but I already knew the story because I'd read the novel so I can't say that I was like super like intensely committed to driving through the plot on this one it was more like just to experience it if I can't get a kid to pick up the full novel I might be able to get them to pick up the graphic novel and then that might lead them to read more of the DC icon series or the Marvel series that are coming out like it's all about trying to get those kids to read Next we have Katie the Cat Sitter, which was super funny um, and just kind of a fun adventure. Katie is hired to sit her neighbor's cats and they are, there's a bunch of them and they all have special abilities and powers. Like one's a hacker, um, one of the cats is a fighter, like they're, and they are naughty and make a mess and every time like they she has to cat sit the cats have to go out and steal new furniture to replace what they have destroyed it's kind of crazy but the neighbor that she's cat sitting for has some secrets of her own and katie might discover them which leads to some other possible adventures for her and it was just a really fun enjoyable little like middle grade graphic novel my last graphic novel is The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Ostertag. This is, it kind of gave me vibes from, you know that movie Splash from the 80s with Daryl Hannah and Tom Hanks. She's a mermaid, he's a man. When they were kids though, he fell into the ocean of Cape Cod and she saved him as a mermaid. And then years later, he's all grown up in the ocean again. She saves him again and they kind of fall in love. Well, interesting similarities here we have two girls this time so this is lgbt representation and we have morgan she is the human girl and she really wants to escape this little island where she lives everything's supposed to be perfect there but she really wants to finish high school and get away like her mom's divorced her brother's kind of a little brother he's a little bit volatile and a little bit like driving her nuts and her friends they don't really know her like she hasn't come out to her friends that she's gay and it's just she's hurting inside a lot so she just wants out but um one night she is saved from drowning by a mysterious girl named kelty and kelty is immediately like smitten with her and like oh my gosh i i love you and she's able to come ashore for a few days um and see if she can get Morgan to return back to her with her to the sea because they're destined to be together. And we find out they do have connections from earlier in their childhood as well, just like Tom Hanks in Splash. So um, I won't tell you exactly what kind of sea creature Kelty is. She's not a Kelpie, though. You might be thinking, oh, her name's Kelty. She must be a Kelpie. Nope. But you will find out what happens when you read this book. It's really fun and the art style is very bright colored and it's a really easy to read graphic novel. Okay, so now we've got the novel novels that I read other than my official TBR and we're going to start with the two that my mom's cat picked for me to read if you saw that video. We had Air Awakens and Never Kiss Your Roommate. My mom's cat sucks at picking books, can I just tell you? This book... It was listed on so many websites, like recommendations for YA fantasy and YA fantasy with elemental magic. And I was like, okay, great, cool. It was not written well. There were like places where, I'll give you an example. Um, two characters are writing back and forth. Okay. There's a male and a female character. The male character is trying to teach the female character about magic and she doesn't want to learn. And 
she finally says, okay, maybe you can teach me a little bit. So his letter says, I see that your, ch your tone has changed. So he continues this letter. She writes another letter back to him. And then his return letter is, oh, your tone seems to have changed. Um, dude, you already said that. You'd think the author would pay attention or at very least the editor. Do people not read these things? I mean, this does look like an indie published book and maybe they don't have like editors there. I don't, I don't know. That's just one example of many, like where the writing was just poorly done, poorly executed. Some of the, um, like the descriptions were just gag worthy. I went on Goodreads and so many people marked this as five stars. I was like, what in the heck? And then I scrolled down further in the reviews and there were a lot of one stars and so on. And then I was like, okay, at least I'm not the only one. Really fantastic premise for a story. Okay. Vala, which is the main character, the, um, the female girl, she works in a library in a palace and she, um, discovers through kind of an accident that she has elemental magic and she's the first person with air magic in like a century or more. And so the prince who also has elemental magic is going to like train her, taking her kind of under his wing. And there's some like tension, romantic tension between the two of them. She also has romantic tension between two other guys. Like there's like a love square. Is that a thing? Um, I don't understand the point of that. There's like too much complication going on there. But the magical part of it was a really great premise. The execution, not so much. I kind of want to like never read this again and give it away. I'm going to see if one of my students want it though because they're not as critical readers as I am and I, I want to try them first because if they get caught up in the, the magical elements and enjoy it, then they enjoy it. The other book that my mom's cat picked for me was Never Kiss Your Roommate by Feline Harms. Overall, this was pretty good. It wasn't fantastic. Um, we have a female-female romance at a boarding school and I enjoyed it. It's a super exclusive boarding school. Um, there's a chitter chatter blog called the watcher who's like reporting on everybody's secrets, everybody's relationships, blah, 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 blah. Our main character comes to the school, is introduced to her roommate who everyone says, watch out. She's really ornery and they catch feelings for one another. Um, my only problem that I had with this, I don't know if it's the only one, but the one that stood out to me the most is there was just this very stereotypical, like, teenager party, seven minutes in heaven. The two characters that w are starting to, like, vibe for each other, of course, get picked to go into the closet. Like, so stereotypical of, like, especially teen movies, but we see this in books sometimes, too. Like, enough with the seven minutes in heaven. Like you can come up with a better device than that to get them to kiss for the first time if you need them to do that. Like, do better. Otherwise, I enjoyed it. Um, and... <sighs> there was a lot of different representation in here, which I appreciated. I did kind of wonder if their relationships were fitting together a little bit too conveniently. But that's probably just me being really, really picky. So if you're interested in this at all, I definitely think it's worth your time. It just maybe wasn't my favorite read of this type. Does that make sense? Okay, I did say I was going to try to keep these shorter. Mm, sorry. All right. Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. This was so cute and so much fun. I can't wait to pitch this to my middle schoolers. I'm going to be putting a YA sticker on it because there's some like cussing stuff if I remember right. But anyway, I have a full spoiler free review on my channel posted for this already. So I'm not going to say much about this in this video except to say our two main characters are put together in a dance competition and they catch feelings for one another. The main character is also struggling with her parents' divorce. But it's a very well done cute book. Nicola Yoon, like what else would you expect from her? Is it Nicola? Nicola. Anyway, moving on to a middle grade book that was 
really, really beautiful. Um, we have Beyond the Bright Sea, and this won the Scott O'Dell Award, which is historical fiction, and this is by Lauren Wolk. It is about a young girl, Crow, who's lived her entire life on a tiny, tiny island, uh, the Elizabeth Islands in Massachusetts, which is in the Martha's Vineyard kind of area of the world. Um, she was abandoned when she was just a tiny baby, like hours old, and she was found by this man that she calls Osh. He's like her adoptive father. And there's also Miss Maggie who lives nearby across the sandbar. She's always been curious about the world around her, Crow has, and she's really curious about finding out the mystery of where she came from. Did she come from this island that used to be a leper colony? Did she come from another place? Is there, does she have a family out there? Does she have siblings? Like, what's her story? And this is about her quest, which is um, adventurous and sometimes dangerous. Um, and also involves treasure. But super fun book. I would recommend anything by Lauren Wolk. Her books are middle grade, and so they're very approachable, quick reads. But they also have, like, this emotional tug at your heart kind of element to them. So definitely, definitely recommend Beyond the Bright Sea. The next one is Bookish and the Beast by Ashley Poston. This is from the Once Upon a Con series. And we have our main character who loves books, especially the Starfield books. Starfield is like the big sci-fi show slash book series slash movie series that this con Once Upon a Con series revolves around. Um, so our main character, Rosie Thorne. I mean, how's that for a play on words there? Um, she is driving one day and this dog kind of runs into front of her car and she stops and she wants to make sure the dog's okay and she follows it to this house that people call the castle house and she doesn't think anyone lives there so she goes into the house and um ends up breaking something no damaging something that's quite valuable and who should happen to be staying at this house um a friend of the owners and this young man happens to be an actor from the Starfield movies and he just happens to play her favorite character but he's really really ornery and kind of a jerk and his guardian um because he's not 18 yet um says to Rosie you are gonna have to pay us back for this thing that you damaged and she goes okay I'll come work for you give me a job well, there's this massive library that the owner of the house has built up with tons of books, but it's not organized. So he says, okay, you're going to come and organize the library. You're going to do inventory. You're going to mark down all the damage, the values, everything for every book in the library. And he will help you. Um, Vance is his name, Vance Reigns. And he's like, yeah, right. I'm not going to help her. But as she starts to come after school every day to work in this library, they start to hang out and spend more time together, and because this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, you can guess what happens next. While we're talking about cute romantic stories, we have Last Chance Books by Kelsey Rodkey. Um, I also gave a copy of this book away recently, which is kind of fun. Um, this is about warring bookstores, and the two teenage characters that work there. We have um, at Books and More, which is a family-run bookstore that's been there forever. Madeline Moore is the main character and she um is just loving life at the bookstore she plans on going to college and getting a business degree and coming back and running the bookstore for forever and she lives with her aunt because her irresponsible mother just kind of left her there her and her brother and said raise my kids um she has a lot of anger towards her mother and so when her mother says guess what i'm coming back to stay forever she's like yeah right whatever um and then across the street, there is a new branch of the bookstore prologue. And this handsome young man, Jasper, happens to work there. But she didn't know that. And he came into her store a couple of times and they flirted and exchanged phone numbers. Uh-oh. Little bit of You Got Mail vibes, kind of. But they immediately know their enemies, or almost immediately, anyway. Um, but another cute, summary contemporary. All right, I've got two more books, and both of these were five-star reads for me. We have Ace of Spades, and I'm going to slaughter this author's name, Farida Abike Yamide. This is a mystery slash thriller. I don't know the difference between those two. Do you guys? Um, set at a 
private school that's very snooty and almost seems British, but we do learn it is in the United States. And these two guys, these two kiddos, are um, taking turns telling us this story. And they are Devon and Shiamaka. And they are the only black kids at the school. And they're both being targeted by a bully called Ace or Aces. And like secrets about them are being spilled, poster, like pictures are being posted, unflattering things. Like Devon is gay and he gets outed. Um, one of his exes like had taken a video of them and it gets spread around. Like crazy stuff happens. He actually gets beat up at one point as a result of the actions by aces. Um, Chiamaka is like the head prefect of the school and like set up to go to Ivy Leagues to become a doctor and she is targeted as well. Like a picture that she didn't even know was taken like of her laying on some creepy blonde dolls kind of passed out drunk gets posted and like other things happen to her as well. And at first these two are like okay there's got to be something we have in common other than that we're black like what else do we have in common who else is trying to take us out and they're trying to solve this mystery and I oh there are a couple of plot twists in here there are some things that I did not see coming there are some things that I was like please don't let it be this please don't let it be this like intense intense things happen and there are some moments where you think oh finally this is gonna get figured out and then oh no it, like, I, I know I'm not explaining this well, but it's because I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's really, really well done. I am not going to be taking this to school because there's so much cussing and, like, sexy times talk in here. Most, mostly because of the sexy times and, like, the drinking and stuff. But, um, but it's beautifully done, very well written. As I said, I gave it five stars. So, if you're thinking about picking up this book, please do. And our last book, as I said, was another five-star pick. This is Darius the Great Deserves Better. This is the sequel to Darius the Great is Not Okay. If you don't know, number one, it is about a young man named Darius who is Iranian-American. He's gay, but maybe he doesn't even know it yet. And he and his family go to Iran to visit his grandparents he's never met. His grandpa is very sick, um, probably going to die in the next year or so. And so they want to go make this trip and get to know him and his grandmother and Darius makes friends with this another boy there and he starts to want like wonder why am I like feeling this way about him like what am I crushing on him am I what's going on and he's also a little bit overweight and he and his dad have a struggle with that like both he and his dad struggle with depression as well and there's just a lot of complications going on in the second book things get more complicated and I can't t tell you too much because I don't want to spoil things. Um, I will tell you that both of these books might make you hungry for Persian food. They both might make you want to drink tea because he loves tea and he's constantly talking about it. Yeah, I, that's all I'm going to say. Um, but very beautifully written duology. I don't know if he's ever going to return to this world of this character, Adib Khuram is the author, but oh, so, so, so well done. So, my apologies that this video was so long, but that does bring us to the end of my June reads. As I film this, it is July 1st, so I'm kind of just barely getting started. I will let you guys know how the month goes. I'm not going to say hopefully it's not as much because I have so many books that are unread that I need to get to that I want to read a lot in the month of July. But I also have two grad school classes starting next week, so we'll just see how it goes. Have a wonderful and bookish day, you guys. Happy reading. Adios.